Hello, everybody. Welcome in Fabriano in Aquarello 2020 panel discussion number two. The topic of today is um, watercolor research and new in technique. Um, moderator is Winetta Boger from Australia. Participation are um, Eileen Bondoc uh, from Philippines, Gio Giovanni Balzarani from Italy, Jenny Matthew from Scotland, Sandor Sansaki from Hungary, and Dragana Padovic Dodig from Serbia. Um, I hope the uh, audience will enjoy um, the discussion and um, I want the audience to remember that it is not our task to give answer, but rather we want to give points uh, the artists can focus on and meditate later. Thank you for joining us um, and I now give the line to moderator, but I want the audience to remember that if you wish, you can see back um, the registration of the recording of the video on YouTube in a few days. Enjoy the discussion and uh, Winetta, the line uh, goes to you. Thanks, Sana. And welcome to everyone. Welcome to you all, to our panel. Um, we have an interesting discussion group tonight. We've got five artists from all over the world as Anna has indicated. And I'm Wynne, I'm Wynne Vogel, and I lead the Australian delegation for the last three years to Fabriano and Acquarello, and I've been very honoured to do that. I'm a watercolour artist. Uh, my background has always been watercolour, but as you can see behind me, I love to use my watercolour techniques, um, and I apply them by breaking down other mediums and using them on big canvases as well as on paper. So there's lots of exciting things to discover. And I'll get everyone to introduce themselves. We'll start with Giovanni uh, from Italy. Let you introduce yourself, Giovanni, thanks. Good morning. Um, I am Giovanni Balzarani, one uh, of the four Italian leaders of Fabriano in Acquarello 2020. I have been an Italian leader for for five years. I am a professional watercolor painter from Latina near Rome, Italy, and I'm very happy to be here with you. Uh, I started painting uh, when I was a child and I attended Hart High School uh, and then Academy of Fine Arts in Rome. I was always interested in details, uh, looking towards great masters like uh, Dürer, Caravaggio, De Chirico and Chuck Close. Improving my painting research in all techniques, uh, uh, like oil, charcoal, pastel, and digital. In all aspects of painting such material, uh, style and subject. I am an academic study, I started painting with uh, soft pastel, turn, then I turned into oil. Watercolor te technique uh, came uh, after oil just to try out different techniques, painting landscape. Now, uh, I paint contemporary still life, mainly glass and metal object, and uh, a urban landscape taken from my travel photo in hyperrealism style. Thank you. Thanks, Giovanni. Uh, Eileen, would you like to introduce yourself and the Philippines to us? Okay, hello my friends. My name is Eileen and I'm from the Philippines. I have been painting for more than 30 years during which I've studied and worked with various art media. I'm also an art instructor. I run an art studio program and I hold workshops in private and public venues. I've been, I participated in Fabriano for the past three years. This is my third year and for the past two years as a leader, thanks to my friend Karen Sioson, whom some of you know. Uh, to let you know who I am, I basically I have a curious streak in me and I often find myself looking into new things to do and to get out of my comfort zone whenever I can. I like exploring different techniques and also different mediums. And I still see that it is watercolor that I go back to after every adventure. So watercolor is my home as it were. And it's always fun to apply new things with it. Thank you. Thanks, Eileen. That sounds good. We're looking forward to hearing from Jagana and from your situation there in Serbia. We need your mic. Yes. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Dragana Pajkovic-Dodig. I'm from Belgrade, from Serbia. 
And I'm a fine artist uh, academy. I, I graduated in 1998. And uh, I am uh, doing, uh, I am using all the techniques. It depends on my uh, um, uh, thoughts and my uh, mood. And I, I done it uh, all, all techniques, including uh, performances. And uh, after a few years, I met uh, Peja Cimovic. He, he is a big uh, effort. He is giving big effort in uh, spreading around the uh, watercolor media. And uh, because of him, I, I became a leader here for Serbian team. And he, he is now an international leader. I want to thank uh, all, all, uh, all of you and Anna and uh, Peja and all the team we, we had uh, for a few years now. Thank you. Thanks, Dragana. And Sandor, would you like to introduce yourself from Hungary? Unmute first. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good day. Uh, my name is Shando Six. I am Australian Hungarian watercolor artist. Uh, after 20 years of, of business life, I just retired myself and and uh, uh, engaged in, in in watercolor art and uh, and and uh, art management. Uh, I'm very keen of, of watercolor art, and uh, I, uh, that's why my mission is to, to promote the watercolor and, and, and also the education of, of the watercolor art. Uh, in this mission, uh, I already organized uh, three international, large international exhibitions in Budapest, and published the first uh, international watercolor uh, uh, diary. Um, and uh, also uh, three years ago, I established uh, the first uh, watercolor academy in, in uh, Budapest. And we will talk about later on the experience on, on this subject. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Sandor. And Jenny from Scotland, how are you and would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Jenny Matthews from Scotland. Um, I've been working in watercolour exclusively for about 30 years since I graduated from Edinburgh College of Art in 1986. Um, I studied drawing and painting for four years and since then I've been a professional artist and I exhibit around the UK. I do workshops and watercolour demonstrations and I specialise in botanical and flower subjects. Um, I love watercolour for its freshness, for its transparency, for its unpredictability, and its uncomplicated medium to use as well. Um, in Scotland, watercolour used to be uh, a sketching tool, whereas now it's actually enjoying uh, quite a strong presence alongside other media, and it's much sought after by collectors. Uh, my first trip to Fabriano was in 2016, when I had a painting included in the biennial competition Marque d'Aqua. And this will be my third time as leader of the Scottish group in Fabriano in Aquarello. Ah, so as you can see, we've got a really broad range of interests and exciting artists who are going to talk to us a little bit tonight about what their research and their experience and how that's led them to the new techniques that they use or different techniques. And we've got five different perspectives to share with you. So Giovanni, you would like to maybe talk to us from your background as a fine art restorer. You have um, experienced lots of techniques that you use and you have experienced, I'm sure, as a fine art restorer in Italy, some amazing artwork to see and, and the information that that's given you to work with on your own. So would you like to talk to us about how you have used that experience and research? Yes, sure. Um, now, uh, my experience of fine art restore uh, lead me to use a uh, bring restoration de and decoration techniques into watercolor world, uh, like uh, painting background and washes, uh, transferring oil painting perfection on watercolor, improving execution technique, 
In many restoration work, the um, watercolor is used the, to rebuild painting on frescoes and, and on canvas. And restoration gave me also the, the passions to keep painting on a very white time with a high level of concentration and uh, from start to end, especially of fine uh, small details for hours and hours and hours. I bring a lot of restoration tools uh, that I can apply of my hyper-realist watercolor, like brushes with a small number from uh, five zero to six. Is a example. Cleaning soap, uh, pigments, and uh, paper knowledge. Among these tools, I have uh, found a very interesting one uh, for my research on using um, all techniques and tools into a contemporary approach. In restoration field, uh, the sea sponge is uh, widely used to decorate a, a stone and marble effect and to dry surface. This is my, my sponge, sea sponge. Uh, I bought uh, is, uh, it uh, 25 years ago and uh, I use until today and um, for my still life dark background, plugging it uh, softly on many layers and, uh, and shades in order to have a final homogeneous ba background. For like example, for my, for my background, black background, I take a, a piece of sea sponge is uh, on a watercolor and uh, plug, plug, plug for many, many, many layers. And uh, mm, today uh, we have a huge amount of uh, old and uh, contemporary tools uh, that help us painting and the research passed us to find and reuse them in another way than before, mixing them to create a different style and a new creation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Giovanni. And from a totally different perspective, we've got Sandor, who has an interesting experience that um, he's found as as part of his school, students from age 27 to 84, and they're all in the same class. So Sandor has had the experience of working with the impact of and opinions of artists from different ages. And you might like to talk to us about how that's shown you new ways to do, to do your watercolour work with the group. Sandor. Okay. So, um... I just forgot to, to mention that uh, this is the third year since I'm uh, a leader of, of a, a uh, artist committee and and because uh, it was a very interesting situation in the first couple of years I just uh, 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 lead a, a mix uh, artist group from Eastern European countries and I just realized that hopes the Hungarians need some some sort of exposure so that's why I, I tried, uh, I established the, the Watercolor Academy uh, three years ago and we started uh, to, to help the, the artist. And, and interestingly, because you just mentioned, we had uh, uh, artists from, from, from young ages to, to, to up to, to 40, 42, 43. And uh, in, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we try to help them not just just find the, the possibilities and the capabilities of, of watercolor but also we we help them to to understand the, the possibilities and uh, and and also we teach uh, drawing and, and 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 art and we go back and analyze the, the techniques and, and, and the, the color patterns of, of the old masters and the contemporary masters. So we have uh, lots of view on, 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 on the capabilities. And after when, when we had the, the uh, practice session, we, uh, we use uh, examples from, from, from different masters as well. Uh, and uh, uh, the first year, in, uh, we just created a, a basic foundation course. And after the third year, we just realized that much more interesting and, and much more uh, 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 capability if, if, we, if we get the, 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 
the different age group together and and we can we can show them how the the, the younger age and the older age uh, artists can can formalize and and express their their uh, really uh, inside the, the different self expression but they paint the, the similar subject but when you when you realize that you have 12 different uh, artists and we got 12 different paintings 12 different color pattern and 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 the style is also a little bit different and we don't want to force one style we just would like to to uh, let them the way to to, to force their own uh, own uh, expressions and and self expression so it's a very interesting it's a whole academy sessions we we uh, we do it uh, from september to may and uh, once a week for three hours so this is the, the three hours is a is a amazing session every 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 week so they really like to come and 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 paint together and learn together and experience from each other so that's pretty impressive because we have the experience of Giovanni using his own personal professional background and you have the um, joy and excitement of having and seeing the impact of different ages working together on each other. And Eileen has almost got a similar sort of situation in a way. Uh, she teaches a school, but she has her insight is about the way she gets her students to look at the subject and you might like to talk about that Eileen. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you, Wynne. Um, a very important uh, aspect in the practice of watercolor is how an artist chooses subjects or how he would decide what to paint. And I think it is important as a teacher to help others in this matter. So from last year's leaders meeting in Fabriano, I remember Anna's uh, speech and my takeaway from her message was to promote using watercolor as a way to express oneself, uh, as a means of self-expression, very much like what writing is. So in later conversations with other artists, art students and colleagues alike, I would make it a point to look and ask for stories. I ask for stories behind their artwork, such as if what is the idea or a feeling that triggered whatever they painted about. Eventually it came around that the story has become more significant a more significant aspect uh, of a painting beyond even technical excellence. So subjects and scenes are now looked at from a personal point of view and the paintings now represent personal stories. So for the artist, or whether they're uh, students or uh, professionals, this realization has made it easier to decide what to paint. They just have to look around, just look around you, and then look inside you, all right? So in, in a recent online challenge, for example, I presented the artists with several, several references of fruits for them to create their own painting with their own composition, colors, style, technique, etc. And then I made a demo example and I painted an orange here. And I painted an orange and I like the color orange. Uh, that's more like me. And I hung it on a string. And uh, my story there is that the hanging part is how I feel because we're hanging on during these uh, difficult times of uncertainty. So other people also have their own stories. And so for succeeding weeks, I meet with other artists online and we share in our chat room what we have done and we do a bit of show and tell. So it's very encouraging for them to paint more easily and find things to paint. And I also see this happening in other art groups because we do have a lot of art groups in our country and um, you know the members are bonded in different ways. But one thing I noticed and I've realized is that everybody has a story to tell. So that is our starting point right now that we look for stories on what to paint. Thank you. Thanks, that's amazing. That's really an interesting story. Um, and Anna, that was a really great, you can see that from what you say um, to us, we do take inspiration. So that's really exciting. 
So we'll talk with Dragona now because she has an approach about her materials and the materials that she uses. And that's a very interesting area that is forever progressing um, now at the moment. Hello. Um, I, I will try to uh, show you what kind of uh, grounds and uh, textures we can use it uh, like experiment in watercolor. Uh, we all know that we uh, on exhibitions can uh, use only 10% uh, other uh, watercolor. Now I will show you uh, this is a watercolor on a, on a uh, canvas. Uh, the other approach is to make it on the wood. Okay. And um, different kind of uh, experimenting is uh, with the paper. It's very interesting because uh, you can you can uh, rub it, uh, you can scratch it on the paper after after you paint, and you make uh, some uh, new expressions. Uh, but uh, from outside and inside, we picking up uh, all things we want to to share to send the message uh, through our work. And I try here, uh, I will try here to to show you how to do on uh, plexiglass uh, mixed media but it is uh, uh, very very interesting because it's uh, transparent you see this is uh, plexiglass and i will try to show to you with the uh, acrylic media how you can paint on uh, this kind of uh, surface you can do it uh, really light you see and afterwards you can do some i hope you can see afterwards you can put some sand on it okay when it's dry you can finish it uh, like with the stick uh, stick color and you will uh, do uh, more uh, structure on surface that's very interesting you can see when you put it like this you can see it's very difficult because it's um, shadow and so but it's interesting to experiment I want to, to share with you um, uh, today uh, more many producers of uh, watercolor they put in color uh, uh different kind of uh, colors the tones and you you can uh, get uh, crackles you can get lumps you can get uh, uh, many many things uh, already uh, finished you know you can pick it up and uh, use it and that's very very interesting because it's challenging to try uh, new things and uh, experiment in, in, in your uh, style to be individual. Thank you. Thanks, Dragona. And we, that was a surprise. We have an example of work happening in the studio while we're talking. So you're very brave. <laughs> so Jenny, um, as opposed to uh, Dragona showing us the materials that she uses, your experiment on the mind you like to um ex you can explain how you approach your art using your approach and abstraction from the mind yeah thank you um yeah for me innovation is taking the next step from figurative art towards abstraction so the way i do that is i like to do a painting with lots of detail so at this one here is one which i did in my garden last summer so i took maybe three hours painting and putting as much information in there as I could see. Um, basically, I want to be able to remove information later when I work from it, but I don't want to be lacking any information. So that's why it's very detailed. So then I take it to the studio and in the studio, I ask myself some questions about that painting. I, for example, I would say, what are the dominant memories I have of that? What did I feel? What, what was it like being out in the garden at that time? Um, what drew me to the subject initially? What are the key elements that I really want to keep? How could I summarize it? 
is there any un unnecessary information that I could remove? So basically, what is the essence of that image? How do I want to record that without all the extraneous detail? So this painting is the one which I did from this painting. The key elements you can see I've kept is colour, because that's really important for me. I love colour. And a few little passages which I really enjoyed, I wanted to keep in there, but I've removed a lot of information. Um, so in order to attain abstraction, I find it helps quite a lot to remove that illusion of three dimensions, which I would have here, to get it down to two dimensions. And I actually use collage in there as well. So I make bits of paper, I make my own collage by painting watercolour paper with watercolour. Now I tear that up and I stick it on to create those blocks of colour. Um, I also love to use the qualities of watercolour. So I use a lot of water, so there's a lot of colour merging, blending, running into each other and loads of happy accidents that I really like to harness and keep. I don't want to control too much. So I wait for things to happen and then try and work that in. I'm sure you've had people say to you, your palette looks like a painting. And what I'm trying to do is to get somewhere between that ab complete abstraction of the palette and a figurative painting. So somewhere in between, I'm trying to create something new. And I was also thinking that during this time of lockdown, abstraction actually is a really fun way to go back to your paintings. You can rework your paintings. So you could look at some paintings that you've done in the past and try to get something more from them, try and remember what you felt at the time and recreate something new. So there's lots of interesting and um, inspiring ideas to think through from Jenny talking about the, the approach of having a, um, taking her painting from realism to abstraction, the different uh, materials that uh, Dragana has talked about and demonstrated to us. Um, it's quite an amazing thing to think that you can use those various techniques in the studio and apply professional um, talked about his explanation of using tools that he uses as a professional fine art restorer. Um, you don't have to be a fine art restorer, but the research that you can do can show you some of these things. And Sandor's experience with age groups um, of influencing each other is really significant because we often think, you know, oh, we're old. And we have an emerging artist here in Australia who's at the 30 and she's learned from all the other artists around and people is really inspiring. So it gives you access to information that perhaps you didn't have easily before. And Eileen, um, you're, uh, have, you have a very interesting approach and a very significant approach in that not just painting an object but actually getting the emotion and the feel is similar to what uh, Jenny was talking about. So it's been really, uh, it's really an interesting uh, experience. Anna, do you have any questions that you would like to ask at all? Um, no, I'm taking notes about all the things you say and I think it's very interesting. The job you have done, it's incredible. Um, you focus on a lot of points and this I like and this I will ask the leaders from the other groups to uh, to go through also because it's uh, really inspiring for all of us go on when you're 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 doing great well we had a really exciting time talking together we really enjoyed listening to each other and learning about each other and I think for me that's been really inspiring so it's been really a great exercise so thanks to everyone. Thank you. Hope everyone's enjoyed it. If you leave this bit in, we're welcome to try and explore your art and go and test out abstraction and different techniques and different tools and tell a story and ask somebody who's old to come and influence what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 What's that? Ah. Ah. <laughs> See you. Ah. Bye.